Armed Force here on short notice, so thank you. Um, before we get started, and I see Joe's got his hand up already, but before we get started, let's try to keep things to one question per person so that we can keep this moving along. Um, and with that said, we will open it up now for AK. So Joe Kelly, why don't you go ahead, please? Arturis, how you doing? How are you, Joe? Good. Hey, um, so I, I mean, without getting into too much detail, but enough detail to kind of water our lips, could you at least explain to us how the, the Vukovic thing went down? Were you working on this for weeks? Because, you know, they were kind of playing uh, bob and weave with him, you know, a month ago saying he's available and then saying he's untouchable. And all of a sudden you, you guys land him. So what was kind of the process of how this how this ended up going down? Well, I can tell you how we, you know, prepared. So we, we kind of two weeks out, we, we did a lot of uh, kind of internal meetings and um, to kind of put down some ideas how we can make this team better. And that was main objective and by trade deadline or, you know, in free agency or in the draft, uh, you make your team better. That was an opportunity to do so. And I think uh, a lot of those ideas, when it gets closer, usually historically it happens around 48 hours before. And uh, this was a little bit closer. So it was just uh, continuous conversations. And, you know, it, it has to do with the assets you have on, on, on your roster and the players that they like. And, you know, when we got some things that they did and, you know, usually you don't get uh, too many chances at uh, all-star uh, level players, and we were fortunate to uh, to get it done. Thank you, Casey. You got the next one here. Go ahead, please. Arturis, uh, there's always uh, you know the immediate uh, impact of a trade, and then there's, there's also the future. It, from my read, this 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 is a sign that you want to try to obviously win now, but does it also have future ramifications in the sense that it can make it a more attractive situation moving forward? Yes, obviously we want Chicago to be an attractive destination for free agents. Um, but, you know, for us, is you know, we evaluate it. Um, uh, we had a sample size of more than 40 games and, uh, you know, we made a couple of decisions and to select certain guys to add a couple of guys to, to this team that can help uh, win games because we, we're serious here about winning. Uh, we're serious about the culture of uh, be very competitive, and uh, any opportunity we get uh, to make this team better, we will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike McGraw, go ahead, please. Mike, it looks like you're muted. Oh. Okay. Arturis, how um, fluid was the process in the last couple of days? I read somewhere where, you know, some, uh, a magic source said they had no intention of trading uh, Vukovic uh, earlier this week, you know, you guys could well have been pursuing other people. Did you have to shift gears, change your strategies as this went along? Shifting gears happens, uh, you know, it's every hour, every minute uh, leading to trade deadline. Uh, I think there were very cold conversations and then got warmer and, you know, we got to the point where uh, we had enough uh, to put in a deal that can make it done, you know, can make this deal work. And uh, yeah, I mean, with a couple of deals that we did uh, today, I think uh, they also are constructed uh, in a matter of, you know, hours, minutes, some of them very quick, uh, some slower developing, you know, the, usually the, you know, the three-way deals are a little bit slower, but uh, yeah, but. Like I said, you know, this, you know, opportunity today was great. I think uh, we, you know, improved our team today. Uh, owner, ownership was great. Uh, they supported us. Uh, they've been they've been close to us during all this process. And uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, you don't get um, any opportunities, you know, like you get you can get, you know, we have Zach now as an all star. Uh, Nicole is an all-star, uh, so any opportunities we get to make this team better, uh, we took a chance today. All right. Darnell Mayberry, go ahead, please. You know, Arturis, obviously you just mentioned that the mm -hmm. main goal is to make the team better. But mm -hmm. leading up to this, I mean, how much was the objective to get experienced players 
Uh, you got two 30 year olds and a 29 year old. Was that the objective all along or did that develop as the as the deadline approached? And then also, what does that say about um, the, the direction that you're building? I mean, for us, it's kind of like we've been waiting to see which direction you guys would head. And now to bring in such experienced guys, I mean, what does that say about the direction that you'd like to head as, as opposed to maybe building young with inexperience through the draft? Well, you know, you obviously choose the right guys. You, you never target, okay, this is the age of the player that I'm targeting. I think, and like I said, you know, all these opportunities that come randomly right at you. And, you know, we, you know, we, you know, got this opportunity and regardless of your uh, roster right now, this, this, these are the pieces that we uh, added right now for this year. And moving forward, um, I, without giving up, you know, in our minds, without giving up too many assets. So, I thought that we really improved today, and uh, we have what 29 games left. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make a push, and you know, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens the rest of the season. Thank you. All right, Jamal, you're up. Go ahead, please. Hey, what's up, Arturis? Uh, I have a question about uh, Vucevic's fit with Zach and mm -hmm. uh, just sort of what did you like about that? And, you know, did you think about sort of in terms of, of your know, players you're looking to acquire, not just him, you're looking at how they fit next to Zach? Is, do you think that's something, because what does this say about sort of how do you view Zach and his place on this team? Well, correct. I mean, you know, it's, it's easy to, uh, you know, put, you know, to add Nicola uh, to the way we play. You know, because, you know, we, we put in the offense that is, you know, free flowing and there's a lot of uh, ball movement and uh, decision making. And he has, uh, you know, he can score, he can score in a low, he can score from a three. Uh, he's facilitator. I think uh, one of the, you know, the best, you know, things that he can do is can facilitate shots for others as well, besides the fact that he's a 25 and 12 player. So, uh, so we were, you know, very excited. So we, it just kind of like it, it's not eliminating a you know a need for the you know guard guards constantly facilitating for bigs uh, here in this situation you know big can uh, you know facilitate uh, shots and create offense for others as well so he's going to make uh, everybody's life much easier all right Cheryl Ray you got the next one here go ahead hi Arturis how you doing you, you address several needs, but what do you think about your point guard situation? Were you trying to address that too, or, or are you satisfied with who you have there? I mean, we're satisfied right now, you know, who we have. You know, they, those guys have been playing, you know, pretty well. Like I said, you know, we just uh, – last couple of games, you know, the guys were a little bit uptight, and, you know, I, I, can, I can feel that, you know, emotionally, you know, leading to trade deadline. Uh, but uh, I think the, like I said, you know, getting even another additional facilitator uh, on offense like uh, like Nicola, you know, it's going to make guard play much easier. So, I mean, how do you define point guard? You know, who brings the ball up and just initiates the offense, right? So, so I think it's just going to make uh, a little bit easier for everybody by getting facilitated facilitator like Nicole. So. All right, Eric Woodyard, go ahead here. Hey, what's up, Arturis? How you doing, man? What's going on? As, as you as you evaluate, you know, up, to, up until this point, you know, how do you see the team? And you talked a little bit about expectations going forward, but like, what's what's realistic expectations? Is it playoffs or what is it? I mean, I understand it's your first year. You know, you guys are, are are changing things up constantly, but just like with this move, what are the expectations moving forward? I don't know. You know, the trades finalized an hour ago, so we can wrap our head around what we have, and we're very excited to what we have. We got better today, so for sure. And we we try to win games. You know, that's basically why we're in this business. And uh, again. You know, right from the beginning, from the time we got here, we, we said that we're trying to uh, get back to relevancy. And, you know, today made it happen. So I think expectations are always, uh, you know, obviously winning and getting in the playoffs and, you know, getting our team better. 
And, you know, we added, like I said, you know, we added, we added Nicola, we added Amino, we added, you know, Javante Green, uh, Daniel Thais, you know, we added Troy Brown. So there's a lot of, you know, kind of interesting pieces there, you know, and has different attributes, each player, um, uh, a lot of them I liked, you know, we liked for a long time uh, and were targeting in different situations. And now was a chance to acquire them. And we were really excited. And, it's, you know, they're, you know, they bring different things to our roster. Uh, you know, some of them are younger uh, and developing. Uh, some of them are more defensively oriented players and some of them can score the ball. So, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I want to thank all the players that we, you know, traded away. Obviously, um, OP, um, Wendell, uh, uh, you know, Daniel and um, Hutch and, you know, and, uh, and Luke, you know, uh, for contributions to Chicago Bulls organization. And uh, we wish them well, whatever they are right now. So. All right. Andy Seligman, you're up. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Artoris. Um, what 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 does this move you think say in general about your willingness to you know to make bold trades going forward and to be bold in free agency also? Well, it's for you probably to discuss, but I don't know. I'm trying to improve. You know, we're trying to improve our team. You know, so it's you know there's certain situations and times in during the season and during the year that you can do so. So it's free agency, it's uh, trades, and it's uh, draft. So that was an opportunity, and you don't get so many opportunities to improve with uh, players like that. And um, I think I think we've done pretty well today. And I don't know. Thanks, Rob Schaefer. Go ahead with the next one. Hey, Arturis, um, you, you've touched on this, but I wanted to ask about the supplemental moves to uh, for Tice, Troy Brown Jr., Aminu, and, and Javante Green. Just for each of those guys, how do you see them fitting in uh, in terms of the way you guys play and, and the goals for, for the next two months of the season? Well, I think uh, we as front office probably, you know, we in, a, in the business of acquisition of talent, and I think um, – uh, that's that was the objective, and then it's for coaching staff to figure out how to you know use those pieces. And uh, um, so I'm, I've been really happy with the addition of uh, talent today, uh, toughness and competitiveness. Uh, this group is you know is going to be in our obviously vision that they're going to fit very well, and uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, like I said, it just happened. Uh, a couple hours ago, so we'll uh, we'll sit down. We'll figure it out. Sam Smith, you're up. Go ahead. Uh, it's not often you can uh, get to add an all star uh, to a team. Was that one of uh, your primary goals coming in? And just in general, what does that mean to be able to add an all star to a team that already has an all star? Well, it's a huge thing. And like I said in the beginning, you don't get the, so many opportunities. I think teams for years chasing those kind of players. Uh, and we did it at trade deadline. So I'm very excited. I'm happy for organization and I'm, you know, happy for Bulls fans. Um, and I'm looking forward to see how this group is going to work. And again, we're not done. So we're going to try to keep improving, you know, keep improving our quality of play uh, and and then keep adding pieces to to what this team is going to look like in the future. Cody, it's your turn. Go ahead. Just from your perspective in 43 games or so, why do you think it didn't work out for Wendell Carter Jr. here in Chicago? Oh, he's, he's a very talented, you know, player and he's, he's improving, um, you know, and in, 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 in this particular deal, I think it's, it's, it's acquisition of an all-star um, equation. So uh, I wish uh, Wendell all the best, and I think he's going to be a very good player in our league. Uh, but, you know, anytime you get a chance to acquire uh, players like Nicola, 
um, and you know, you jump at it. All right, going to the second round of questioning. Joe, go ahead. Hey, Arturis, you uh, obviously have a pretty good feel of Euro players and and <laughs> what they what they are culturally and and how important is it to add a couple older Euro guys for a guy like Lowry who at times it seemed it wasn't that he didn't fit in, but it just seemed he might have been different than some of the other guys, some of the younger guys and, and, and what they do after games and stuff like that. Is there, was there any thought put into that besides the talent that, yeah, this might be something as a, as a nice little buffer for Lowry. Besides the quality of players that we added, I think also the players that have been in playoff games and, uh, they played in meaningful games. Um, they also a competitive bunch. So we need to add to this group uh, guys that have done there, been in playoffs, uh, have some some games there, and uh, what it takes uh, what it takes to win. Uh, so I mean, going back to you know Euros. I mean, I I think I I remember every of the you know. Uh, even players on our roster right now, like where where I was when I scouted the game. So even Nicola, Nicola, you know, I scouted him in, you know, under, you know, 18s and 20s. And then when he was in USC and see him progress, you know, how he developed here in the league and become an all-star. But, you know, it, it, every guy in this, uh, you know, you know, in, in both trades uh, at some point, you know, like, you know, uh, Daniel Thais was, you know, in in Europe, you know, and out, you know, Euro camp, and you know, watching him play in Bamberg, and you know, and, uh, and Ulm, you know, play in Germany, play for national team, and uh, come to the league and see how he's done well in Boston, and um, you know, so uh, like I said, you know, it's, it's just been. You know, all those guys we always obviously had on radar uh, for a while now, and we know a lot of things. We gathered a lot of information. We just were ready to, you know, we had our ideas on uh, on a board what we would like to execute, and, uh, you know, it worked out today. KC, go ahead with the next one, please. Arturis, you mentioned the words uh, toughness and competitiveness uh, earlier, and you also said it, it was an evaluation process to reach the decision that you made today to make these deals. So in that evaluation process, did you feel you were lacking in those departments on your roster? No, I think moving forward, I think those are the things that probably have nothing to do with skill, right? So we just uh, look for it and, you know, a lot of, you know, we got 29 games to go. I think we're trying to improve our, you know, uh, playoff odds, and and there's going to be 29 games in very short time, and you know you need you need that kind of uh, group of players that can compete in every game. And we're going to have April that we're going to have 18 games, so it's it's a mental fatigue. It's not only physical fatigue and you're going to have to show up uh, every game. And I think uh, that's what we're looking for in the group. And that's what we expect. And like I said, you know, moving forward, you know, uh, developing development is important, uh, but also, uh, you know, winning, winning is important too. And sorry, PR, I'm going to break the rule because this is a yes or no question. So I have one quick. Oh. Were, 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 were you confident that the three team deal was going to fall as a second domino when you made the first deal? Uh, those deals are constructed, you know, a lot of times it happens naturally, um, you know, and certain, you know, teams come in, come in late. So it just, it, it just, it was natural development. You know, you talk to one team, uh, develop the concepts and, you know, uh, usually in trades it happens, they get what they want and we get what we want. And, and that's what happened. And then the third team got involved and uh, we accomplished the same. So it's just the same, you know, all three teams accomplished their objectives in, in this Thank situation. You. But Thank they, you. like I said, you know, 
it's it's a natural the way you know you, you don't predict where it's going to go and where it's going to end it's actually fascinating to me in all the construction of uh, trades and you know i enjoy this time of the year too all right okay we got three more questions here mike mcgraw go ahead with the first one here Arturis, can you confirm the protections on those draft picks? Are they top four or something different? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about those details on, on the call. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cheryl Ray, you got the next one here. Arturis, what was it like for you today and the last few days and the, and the collaborative efforts you had with Mark and everyone else in the staff? Could you, could you repeat again? I'm sorry. I didn't. I said, what was it like for you and the staff together and, and exchange ideas and, and to get this done? Long hours, uh, long hours, long days. Um, uh, but it was fun to kind of uh, spend time with the staff. Um, you know, obviously, um, Billy was involved and, and ownership is there. Uh, so... So, you know, it, it's, it's our, as a group, it was our first trade deadline. Um, again, we, you know, you never, you never plan on, you know, on, you know, making, um, you know, like I said, you know, you write out so many ideas on, on, on the board uh, together. You have uh, a zillion discussions and, uh, you know, maybe one will uh, will stick. So that's basically the concept that we used. Uh, a lot of uh, group discussion that led to a lot of success uh, that led to today. So, I mean, the group has been really good and uh, without, uh, you know, collaborative uh, efforts, uh, this wouldn't happen today. So. All right, last question here goes to Cody. Cody, go ahead. Just keeping in mind that you gave up two first round draft picks is still a price to pay, obviously. Were you looking at this with the Vooch acquisition as just his next three years, or did you look at it like we can extend him down the line too at some point to have him for more than three years? Well, we minimize, try to minimize the risk and then, and then with both things in mind to, you know, to, you, you definitely have to give up picks uh, to in acquisitions of that caliber players, but at the same time, moving forward, you know, you hope that the player, you know, obviously is very uh, successful here with the team, and then you want to extend them uh, later on. So I think with uh, both things in mind. Thank you. Approached it. Yep. All right. AK, thank you for your time. That concludes the ability. Folks, thank you, everybody. Awesome.